Friends, comrades, lend me your ears, for it is the next instalment of our Transport Fever campaign. It is now time for the fifth mission, which takes place on the coast of California and uh, basically in the southwest of the US. This is one of my favorites, so I'm really looking forward to this one. So let's get right into it and uh, the gentleman here will again do his uh, thing and explain the details to us. On the coast of California, there's not only sun, sea, and beautiful people, but also a lot to do. Time to turn our gaze toward the stars. A lot has happened in aviation since the pioneers' first attempts. Air travel is no longer just an audacious experiment for daring men in flying boxes, but it also brings interesting prospects for serious businessmen. Sometime in the not-too-distant future, flying will be an everyday thing. People will just sit themselves down in an airplane as if it were a railroad car. So this was, as I said before, the mission where we turned to uh, the air industry and uh, I really like that. So as we uh, can see, I've got three of the medals here. I missed out on the high flyer one, so I must have at least 20 planes and the pioneer, which is to finish the mission before 1943. So let's just keep that in mind as we get started. It is the year 1925, and aviation is making huge progress. Commercial aviation is still in its infancy, however, and is a loss-making operation. Unless you can get a hold of one of the coveted airmail licenses, that is, the government is looking for daring entrepreneurs to take care of the transportation of airmail. That's perfect for us! The American Airmail Network is divided into a range of route sections. Licenses are granted for each of these sections, and anyone can apply for them. Officially, the cheapest supplier is awarded the contract. Unofficially, contracts are granted based on roundtable negotiations between the Postal Authority and the country's biggest transport companies. And we just happen to be one of them. Time to conquer the air! That's it, and, and we just happen to be one of them because of all of our previous successes. I mean, we, share, we have a big share in General Motors, for example. And we helped to build the Panama Canal and the Transcontinental Railroad. So anyway, the issue here is in the early days of aviation, the main, uh, how can I say, the main profit came from the transportation of mail, not passengers. So in order for us to get access to these licenses, we have to first, uh, well, I'm sure he'll discuss it with us. To obtain the airmail license for a route, we need to have permission to land at the departure and destination airports. To get this, it'll be necessary to do a favor for one person or another at the airports. Once we have landing permission for any two cities, our friend at the Postal Ministry will make sure that we receive the license for that route. It might not be entirely kosher, but it will have a very positive impact on our profit margin. So there we go. We're continuing our uh, somewhat under the table uh, inclinations that we had in the uh, smuggle of alcohol before but I guess that's what he was saying the roundtable negotiations it does involve a little bit of action under the table as well so we have to do favors so there we go obtain takeoff and landing permissions from at least two airports so we we have to do that kind of favor at least in two cities Click on the question marks in the cities to find out how to obtain the permissions. So, okay, let's do that. But first, the medals. So, the goal is finish before 1943. So, that doesn't give us a lot of time. It's uh, less than 20 years again. Own at least 20 planes at the end of the mission. Own the landing permissions for all the airports. So, that's quite a challenge. Make sure that uh, at least 12 terminals are built so once we get access to the airports of course each one of them will have one terminal so uh, we can build two more at each of the airports so that's basically all of them uh, industry boom ensure that the number of industrial jobs in LA grows to 600 so let's start in LA since that's where we are right now and there's 556 industrial jobs so not a great challenge. Then there's the other thing as I was uh, discovering yesterday I bought myself a brand new monitor and uh, the thing I noticed with transport uh, fever is unlike before you see I scroll to the left I scroll up I scroll down 
but I can't scroll right. There is an issue here where the screen, I don't know what happens here, it's just how the game is handling this particular monitor I guess. This is a 1080p monitor and I did not have one before. But if I move the mouse very slowly to the edge and a little bit back, then it works for some reason. But if I just take it to the left, it doesn't tend to work. Then I move it a little bit back and forth. It's just a sweet spot, but somehow the mouse pointer goes a little bit further than the edge of the screen. Anyway, I can just move with the keyboard. So if that happens, just uh, you know why that's happening. So let's have a look what we need to do in LA first of all. A bustling aircraft industry is growing around Los Angeles. Donald Wills Douglas and his Douglas Aircraft Company have settled in Long Beach, the Lockheed Aircraft Company in Hollywood, and the enterprising son of an industrialist Howard Hughes is tinkering on new models in a hangar in Burbank. If we supply the aircraft manufacturers with all the equipment they need, we'll be able to use the airport in Los Angeles. So LA has become quite a hub here for the air industry, so we have to get in on that action. And essentially we have to deliver machines to the industrial area which will automatically increase the number of industrial jobs. So basically they're giving us that medal because we have to do it anyway. Or of course we can just ignore LA and just work on other cities but then we'll miss out on the medal of having all of the cities and certainly I'm going to imagine for this mission or scenario LA is my headquarters or the headquarters of our company. You know, it is the biggest city in the region and uh, I've actually been there, so why not? And also when I think of the 1920s and 30s and I see, you know, Hollywood and whatnot or uh, LA, then I think of the uh, golden age of the film industry as well, so can't help that. Now, machines. So the machine factory is here inside LA but the uh, steel that we need, so of course this one doesn't accept uh, anything else, it's just steel. And we can see we need two steel for one machine. So it's quite expensive, that means we need a lot and we're going to need a hundred machines to be distributed. Then the steel, of course, just iron and coal. We're not really interested in slag, so hopefully just the steel. Although there is a use for this lag as well, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. So the coal and iron uh, sources are up here in the mountains on the way to uh, Nevada and Las Vegas. So last time what I did was I actually just hooked it up by trucks and they brought the um, goods down to the steel mill. But of course a train would also not be a bad idea because we can keep shipping the goods out or the machines out to LA and even other cities. There's nothing preventing that of course. However, before we do anything, I'm thinking we have to get a basic source of income because these things will take a lot of money. You see we have 25 million but you know how it disappears. And uh, by the time that the machines actually start selling, uh, we might actually find ourselves in a financial bit of problem there. So let's look at San Diego first. It also has a mission, so we might as well listen to that while we're here. An ambitious airmail pilot named Charles Lindbergh has big plans. He wants to be the first person on Earth to fly across the Atlantic non-stop an intention that we must support, of course. The aircraft for this endeavor is being constructed here. If we supply fuel for the test flights, the runway in San Diego will be available to us. So we really have a lot of powerful friends all over the place, or at least people we work with. So there we go. Charles Lindbergh is uh, based here in San Diego, and he wants fuel, and a lot of it. Again, 100. So if we just have a look, the uh, actual refinery is right here, very close again, inside San Diego essentially. And the oil wells are situated here, I guess this would be Arizona. Then they put this river here, now I don't know if this, obviously there's the one coming from the uh, Hoover Dam and so on, I guess this is the Colorado River, I don't know what this one would be. But they gave this to us as an opportunity for us to actually start experimenting with using ships. 
So it's the natural choice. That's why they put them right next to the water. And if we just have a look, these are all navigable waters. So it's almost a waste not to use it. Of course, it will take a long time, but I think it is the natural thing to do. However, I didn't want to really look at that yet. I just want to discuss my initial plans here. Now, flying from San Diego to LA is really... It happens in real life, but it is met with some derision because it's such a short flight. You literally just go up and you come down. You don't really, you know, there's no actual flight time almost. It's uh, just going up and down. So ascent and descent, that's it. So with that in mind, the most natural thing to connect these two cities would be a train line. And that will be a guaranteed source of income for us. If we look at the size of the cities, for example, Let's see. San Diego is, surprisingly enough, unlike real life, it is the biggest city in the region by far, almost double the size of LA. But LA is then the second largest. So if we can connect these two largest cities, we'll really get a lot of passengers. You can see also that uh, LA has more shopping facilities than it needs. San Diego has less. It has a bit more jobs than it needs and of course we're going to create a bit more jobs in LA. So really there will be incentive for people to use the train line. We can also just do a bus if we want but I think a train line would be better. So let's get that going before we even turn to the main missions. So how to do this now? Um, let's see, the terrain unfortunately is extremely hilly here, so that is something to keep in mind. However, if we start out here and then we curve around and then somehow meet it back there, I think that will be okay. Because if we do it this way around, unless we just stick to the, to the coastline essentially. Well, why not? Last time I did it inland, so let's use a coastal route this time. And I don't know if we're going to extend this to Santa Barbara. Probably not. Although, again, that is an opportunity for income that we will waste then. Some of the things that we have to keep in mind. But let's just make this a dead end. Then we'll sort of follow the contour here, I guess. Something like that, or maybe even on the edge of the city, but uh, just there. We have to start somewhere. Then it's going to go on this 126 meter section and somehow probably around, or we can go through. And then you see that is also 125 meters. So this is the correct altitude and we can therefore just put a nice station here. Something like that. You also don't have to demolish anything. But actually, there is one thing I want to do. Let's just extend this road a little bit. Ah, well, one building will be removed. Unfortunate, but there we go. Then we can put the station. Because I want to have large bus stops here. Not a small one. An actual proper bus station. So that the people can uh, have easy access to the train system. Now, I don't know if it's really necessary to do the high speed tracks yet, but we might as well. Actually, we could just probably climb over this hill. Let's see if we take it from this side. Mm, oh, it's fine. As long as we keep the speeds relatively high. Let's say about like that. Mm, it's not really worth it for 12 kilometers an hour. Or, well, it's $40,000, so let's do it anyway. Let's curve it a little bit more like that. And then we don't even have a bridge, so that's fine. Now we can go back around. Let's just see, obviously that will not do at all. So here the line is going to slow down a little bit. Now, if I just connect it straight up, there will be a bit of a hill situation going on but it will be important for speed you see it's all 300 okay at the end here it slows down because uh, of the curve outside of the station but 
that will at least help. So I'm going to do it. It's expensive and all that, but we need a short, quick hop to San Diego. So next step, upgrade this to a high speed line. Again, it doesn't really matter, but there we go. Then the next thing is of course to put the stations and this is before the mission now even starts and I think it is so important to to do this kind of groundwork situation well at the beginning because it can make or break you so that doesn't quite cut it hmm let's try a smaller road perhaps oh I don't want that kind of horrible slope so, how is this best managed? Something like that, perhaps? Uh, of course, the house is going to be demolished, but c'est la vie. That works. Let's see if we use one of these. Can it even fit here now? Hmm, not at all. Okay, so we have some problems. Too much curvature, too much slope. Something like that. Oh, that doesn't look appealing at all. No, 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 no. <sighs> Definitely not. Let's try again. I can just get a something like that hopefully this will now connect okay that's fine I'm okay with that then just again a very important thing uh, it, it doesn't look so hot but hey and of course if it's up there it's gonna destroy all the houses so it is what it is I guess there we go so they have a nice view but I think it is really important to create the capacity. Then we need one here as well. And that one's quite easy. Then we need the depot for the passenger line. So somewhere here in LA, I guess. It is our headquarters. Hmm, not quite. There we go. Well, we have to work with the hills. So it's just going to be a single train, I think, at least to start off with. So I don't need to double anything. Create the line. And very simple, LA to San Diego. Next thing, the buses. Now this of course is again a bit of a setup and it's going to take a bit of time, but it is so important to do. Just going to connect this. Sorry for the building, but it will help me for my planning. Now just the normal bus stops. No, not the train, the bus. There we go. So, the buses will stop there, then how will they go? Let's just keep going on to the right here. So there'll be one stop there, one stop there. Want to make sure the city is very well covered because uh, more people, more money. One, let's just stay on the outside on the bigger roads. But here I might actually deviate inward. Okay, that is a strange pattern, but it is a pattern nonetheless. So, create the line from the main station to these various stops. Just all around the outside to there, that one, that one, back again, then this one, then that one, and then through to Lower San Diego, even though I guess it's really Upper San Diego. And this will be... San Diego City Bus. We'll need a depot here for the vehicles as well. Oh, it's a nice place. Again, we have to work with the hills. 
too much slope. Hmm. Maybe here by the uh, refinery. Yes, there we go. So how many buses would do for this one? What do we have? The Schneider PB2 is the best we've got. So let's buy 10 of them. And put them on the San Diego City bus line. Same thing in LA. Really, this is quite standard, but it is very critical. At least in my opinion. So I guess we go again to the right. We stop here. That covers this area. Then we stop there. Mm. Now this is not connected yet. Let's ignore that for now. Then we go down to there. Then down there. There. One here by the edge. Then we can go up. Come back down. Stopping somewhere there, coming back down this way. We really do want to reach the houses, most of all. And that should do it. We can just stop once more before the station. Oh, it's so close, that was not really necessary, but anyway. So, first of all, again, the main station, then there. And then we just uh, basically loop... Where am I? There we go. This one... No, wait, this is... This is not quite working. What's happening here? Oh, it's going back, obviously. Don't want to have it go back. First completed, then assess whether the line is working. Now, here is a problem. So, after number four, we should go down there. And then just come back up. And there is one more. And I think that covers it. So we go around. Yes, there we go. So this is just LA City Bus again. And we definitely will need a vehicle depot here. Because uh, we will need trucks and things like that as well. So industrial area is more towards the inland. Uh, region which makes sense you know the coastline is the more valuable terrain and same thing I'll just have 10 again to the LA city bus then of course we need the final touch which is our new train what do we have available uh, I don't want the skunk the skunk only has 13 capacity and this one will be very very busy not maybe initially, but it certainly will be eventually. So let's take the... Uh... Hmm. The slope is not really an issue. We went through the hills and so on, and we have uh, tunnels and stuff. So let's use the Atlantic. And with it, remembering the last experience that we had in the Midwest, the heavyweight parlor is actually lighter than the uh, six-axle one. So let's have some of those. Okay, that just does it. 151 meters and set line to LASD. And let's run the clock a little bit just to see what happens. And we can use electric locomotives in the future. We have the capacity for that. And there she is. Very, very flashy. Let's make it a nice color. Nice red. Oh, that does look so nice. Hmm speed it up a bit it does struggle to get out of the station because the road here is or the railroad here is not the most uh, friendly but once we get to the main line it will be fine even though there's a bit of a situation going on here but that was because of the offshoot there we could remove that but it will still work so what is that frequency on this line? Three minutes. Oh, that's very fine. And you see that the cars are moving already between the cities because they're so close. But there will be immense traffic jams. So having this train will be a very good idea. And I think even though it won't go near its top speed, it will still be decent. Let's just go along with it. 
are passing the car or sort of at least staying on the same speed but we should pick up a bit more speed now 60 kilometers an hour 70 and slowing back down that's okay we have a large capacity almost 100 people although I know eventually that won't be enough so I think this is it for the first episode. I know not much happened towards the actual mission, but again, this is something that will generate us the money that we will need to sustain the other projects that we want to uh, get involved in. So uh, I think we'll start off the next episode by just reviewing what all the other cities want, because why can't we start working on them from the start? You know, I guess we will start with the fuel and so on, but at least knowing what the others want is very important because knowledge is power. So there we go. See you then in the next episode. I am Admiral Andre and I hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic day.